we are now live, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Let's wait a couple of minutes to... Uh... I'll get the uh, screen recording going my end mm -hmm. and we'll see who joins us. Yeah. Yeah, let's wait a couple of minutes uh, for people to join and uh, we can kick off. One more minute. Yep. <laughs> yep, I think we should uh, kick off. So okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're based. Um, my name is Sean. I'm the uh, co-founder of um, one of the co-founders of uh, Planet Note Code. Uh, I'm joined by Matt, who's the uh, master coach of uh, <laughs> um, Bubble Note Code platform uh, at Planet Note Code, who's also my co-founder. Um, so today is our first uh, live streaming session across several platforms. Uh, I believe YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, we are going to uh, go through, well, Matt will be going through several uh, new responsive uh, engine design for uh, uh, techniques and uh, tips um, with Bubble and um, hope you guys will enjoy this session and uh, learn some uh, interesting and fascinating stuff that Bubble recently release, uh, released um, as features. Uh, just wanted to remind everyone that uh, we do publish content on a daily basis, so do uh, feel free to subscribe our YouTube channel, on, uh, sign up on our um, uh, platform, uh, planetnocode.com. Um, and um, also from Monday onwards, uh, Matt will be um, hosting a five days series of uh, a live streaming series called, um, well, he will be building a uh, an inventory counter app uh, uh, for a small business owner. And uh, he will basically spend five days working on this uh, web app um, across, you know, a, a, you know, all a broad spectrum of uh, features and um, uh, techniques around Bubble app building. So make sure you uh, subscribe and uh, join that session. Um, so yeah, I will uh, hand it over to uh, Matt. Great, okay. thanks, Sean. Uh, so we're a few weeks out from the Bubble response engine um, being taken out of beta and being made public. And uh, I think it, it first came out back in late October, November time last year. So some of us have been using it for many, many months now. Uh, others of us, uh, it can seem like quite a, uh, like a clunky step to move from the old UI editor to the new responsive engine. Um, if you have a background in, like a little bit like myself with WordPress, um, using kind of div blocks, a bit of web design, uh, you'll find the new responsive engine is quite intuitive. Um, but uh, yeah, the purpose of uh, the next 45 minutes or so is to uh, demonstrate uh, how I would go about laying out some common elements on a page. Uh, so shall we dive straight into that? Okay, um, so uh, let's begin uh, by looking at uh, building a header. So I have a um, completely fresh page here, uh, recently converted uh, from the old uh, UI editor into the new responsive engine. And uh, these are the first steps that I'd take. Um, I would adjust the width of the page, uh, actually change the container layout to a uh, column, uh, and then adjust the width uh, to, uh, let's go for, uh, 
that value there of 1,240, quite a standard value, and you'll see why the 40 is important in a moment. Um, and let's build in uh, our header. So I'm adding a group in at the top, and uh, we're going to make this group into a row because it's going to be a row of elements starting with a logo, some menu items, etc. Uh, and uh, we make that fix width 100. Um, and a lot of the things you'll notice that I'm doing, uh, they are uh, because I've got the responsive nature of my app in mind. Um, like I could put a fixed pixel value in here of the width of my page, but because I want it to be responsive, I'm saying fill up the full width of the page, no matter how wide it is. And to really show that, uh, let's let's begin to make this look a little bit more like a common dashboard app. So I'm going to change the page background to a uh, slight off gray color, and then in uh, our header, we're going to make it white, just so it stands out. Um, something that I really like to do and build into my apps that I think um, offers a, a, a clear, uh, in, like unified design is to have a um, 20 pixel margin down the left hand side of each element. That just stops when um, your web app shrinks down into like tablet or mobile, it stops your elements from kind of looking on neat and touching the side of the screen. So how do I go about that? Well, if I have my header here, and I'm going to call this outer container, I then put an inner container inside this element. And this time, uh, so this is also going to be a type row. Uh, this time the width is going to be uh, a max width um, and so the max width is going to be the width of the UI builder in my editor minus 20 from one side and minus 20 from the other side. So that would leave me with uh, 1,200. And then uh, if I, oh, okay, I need to change this into a column. There we go. And now that's it. I can center it in the column. Uh, let's uh, just adjust the height. Uh, so the height is going to be 100% of its container, of the outer container. And uh, let's start to add in, um, instead of uploading an image, I'm just going to add in an icon as a logo. Uh, and so the icon uh, is... Let's expand our element tree. Here we've got our inner container. Uh, and so the icon, I want to align to the left. Uh, and we'll center it using the vertical alignment. And uh, let's begin to put in some navigation links. Uh, we have a video talking about, uh, on our YouTube channel, talking about the difference between using a text um, element with a workflow to navigate versus using a link element. If you are linking through to another page and uh, SEO is important to use a link element uh, because Google sees that and recognizes that it's a link within the HTML, the same can't be said for uh, if you have a workflow directing you to another page. So uh, let's just adjust our link so we could have uh, home and then uh, our width is going to be fit to content but and then we remove the min width and that snaps it back into the exact size of the text uh, let's set a fixed height and just reduce that uh, down and then we can center it so i now want my logo to be on my left hand side and i want the text to be on the right hand side of my menu items so if i create a few more here um, Let's call this uh, uh, directory. And let's call this settings. So if I want to move them over to the left, uh, over to the right hand side of my container, and I go into my container settings here, um, if I move to the right, everything goes to the right. If I say create space between, everything gets you a uniform space between them. So the way around that is to, uh, if I put them over to the left, first of all, 
group them together, I'm holding shift and clicking, and then right click and uh, group them into a row. And then I'm going to, again, because I've got the responsive uh, building responsively in mind, I'm going to remove the min width um, because that's just something that I've noticed can come back and, and kind of bite you and annoy you later on. I, I want it to be fit to the width of the content. When I created that group around it, Bob will put in that min width value and I don't need it, so I've got rid of it. Uh, let's for clarity label this right. And then I can now do the equal space between. And you see that I have my logo on my left and my uh, text navigation on my right. Let's tidy up this text navigation a bit. Um, now, this is a really nice, uh, well, one of the many nice features in the new response engine, and that is apply gap spacing between elements. So what I could do, or what you might have ended up doing something similar in the old um, UI editor, was uh, having to apply um, margins to items. So if I wanted a space of 30 pixels between each element, I could go through and put a 15 pixel margin on each side. Um, but then I end up with 15 pixels on the uh, left of the item and also on the right of my final item. So it's not gonna line up so nicely. That's where uh, the gap becomes really helpful. Gap between elements, then my column gap is 30. And then no matter how many if I copy and paste this, menu items I place in there, then it gives you that nice uniformed gap between them. What else do I want to explain at this point? Uh, we've got rows for menu, centered, max, width, container. Um, we should see what it looks like. So remember, I've got my outer container and my inner container. And it's my inner container that is centered, that is confining uh, my uh, menu items to the middle of the screen and not aligning right to the left hand or the right hand edge. Um, that's quite a popular look at the moment. Uh, although, of course, you could have them uh, full screen. Uh, what else shall we add in here? OK, let's look at responsive because uh, this is the new responsive editor after all. Um, so if we have a look at our page, it shrinks all the way down. Okay, and then we get to a point where it's not working quite so well. So let's debug that. Uh, first of all, I'm going to add in that 20 pixel spacing because what I don't like is that when the page shrinks down, uh, I've not got a nice gap around uh, either my logo or my text here. Uh, so I'm going to go into my inner container that I created and add to the left 20 pixels padding and add to the right 20 pixels padding. That then means that when I shrink it down, I get a much uh, neater design. Um, let's have a look at a few more things. If I have many more items in my navigation here, what happens now? Okay, so it pushes it onto another line, and then there's still some sort of max width that's taking, uh, min width rather, that's taking effect. Uh, here we go. I'll get rid of that. So now it, it properly crushes all together. Um, and if we have time, we're gonna come back and look at how you would replace all of that row of text labels, menu navigation items, and how you would replace them with a hamburger icon or the, the mobile menu icon. Um, but for now, uh, let's move on and demonstrate another uh, way of quickly designing up an element with the new response engine, and that will be a hero section. So, uh, I've added in a group below my uh, navigation, and uh, let's call this hero. And uh, I'm going to align it at the middle of my page and make this into... Uh... So when I'm building with the 
a new responsive engine. Um, and something that uh, I encourage people to do is, I'd say 90% of the time, use rows or columns. Like that is the bare basics, the, the kind of the core of CSS. Um, and uh, I, th I think one of the reasons that's so essential is that when you do come to shrinking your uh, app down and making it responsive is that they are like the most predictable ways to work about where your elements are going to go when your screen shrinks down. But in this instance, uh, we're going to use a line to parent because uh, I want my uh, content of my hero to be right in the middle. Um, so if I, let's make my hero section a fixed height. And uh, then let's add in some text. Uh, so let's just give it a little bit more styling. Uh, okay, and I'm not going to have it as fixed width because I want it to be responsive. So unless I chose a percentage value, fixed width will mean that when it shrinks down, it doesn't. The text doesn't adapt to the size of the page. Um, so let's have it as layout will have uh, max width one hundred percent. But it can't get any bigger than the container, the page element that it's in. And we'll just check that should. Oh, no, I made a slight mistake there. Let's go with, okay, let's just go with fixed width, 100%. Okay. Oh, that's still not working. What have I done wrong there? Yeah, you can see, building with bubble, constantly learning, uh, you just kind of have to click around and get the, till you get what you want. Maybe the issue is that, um, yeah, maybe the issue is that I'm using it in a uh, parent container that is aligned to parent. Let's just swap that out and uh, we'll go for a column layout. Okay, right, there's something that I haven't quite got right there. Anyway, um, so if I'm going to, we'll, we'll put this back to uh, aligned to parent and then align it in the middle. Now, using align to parent, if I place a, uh, a text, another text element in here and align to the center, I'm gonna get this nasty overlapping effect. So how do I get around that? Yeah, so you can see the text is uh, on top of each other. I can group them together and I'm gonna group them into a column. And then uh, let's make that column width 100. And then let's place this in the middle. And uh, th like this has got a min height, but there we go. Get rid of that. Uh, so yeah, some of the times when you're working with the responsive engine, uh, it is just finding where there is a value that you don't really want there to be a value. Um, she saw that it just still snapped into place when we found it. Uh, let's preview that. And let's have a look at how that is responsive. So we've still got an issue with something in here. Uh, is it the width? No. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna try, is it this? Here we go, it's the hero width. So that should be set instead to max, uh, there we go, I think that's it. I was just saying where to go, it's about finding, oh no, it's not that, it's about finding the missing values. Um, Right, what do we want to look at? Okay, let's put a button. There we go. Every hero should have a clear call to action. So we'll just get rid of the min height there. Align our button centrally. 
let's preview that. Okay, not looking too bad, at least for uh, demo content. And let's have a look at the responsive. Okay, we have still got something min width. There we go, right. There was a figure remaining from when I've been creating groups, a min width was uh, stopping it from being fully responsive. So that's our header in place. Um, and let's have a look at columns now. And then if we've got time at the end, I will go back and go uh, through how to make each of these different elements responsive. Um, but for columns, so we have our hero section here and um, there we go. Just move myself over to the right. So we've got navigation and we've got hero section. Now, how would we go about with the new response engine laying out uh, some columns below? Maybe we want to list some features. So let's add in another group. And we're going to make this group into a row because it's going to contain two columns in it um, and so this will also be our page width we we'll get rid of that min value because that might frustrate us later uh, align it to the middle and then uh, let's add in uh, let's put our padding in our columns so i've got a group and now i want to place two columns into it and we can take a group and place it inside that group. And this is going to be one of our columns. So it's going to be a column. And then if I remove the width value, uh, and in fact, I'll give it a little bit of height so it's easier to see. There we go. And then let's have a look at it in our elements tree. I'll name this columns. So uh, let's call this uh, left. Oh, bad spelling there. And so left, if I copy and then go into columns and hit paste, I now end up with two columns. And so because I have, haven't placed any constraints on these columns, they are going to take up the same amount of space. Now, if I start putting elements in there that do have min widths or, or max widths that begin to constrain it, then they will, will take effect. But right now I have two columns, which um, if I label this one right, and then I am going to apply a little bit of styling so they're easier to see. Uh, right, let's, let's make it really easy. Let's apply uh, a red to that one and uh, a green to this one. And then let's hit preview. Okay, two equally sized columns. So what might I do uh, at this stage? Uh, well, I'll put some padding in the columns uh, because I like to have that 20 pixel padding. Uh, so importantly on, on the left and the right. Ooh. Let's hit tab there. Uh, and we'll just add a header in there so that it's got a little bit of content. Let's have a look how that behaves responsively. So you'll see they stay the same width all the way down uh, until things get ridiculously small and the elements begin to chop uh, and we begin to lose parts. So with responsive web design, there'll come a point where you want to stop it from shrinking and you'd like them to end up on top of each other or stacked. So let's have a look at that. So in fact, we'll go back into the uh, responsive editor and we'll say um, anything below or including a width of uh, 992 uh, in, fact, no, in fact, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll just do it below. Anything below 992, we want our uh, columns to stack. 
So we can do that by setting um, a conditional statement. Uh, in fact, can we do that in here? Yes, we can do it here. Uh, so in the response editor or in the UI builder, you can do it. We can say page width uh, is less than 992. And then you have to be a little bit careful here. So I'm not placing a min width value in there. I could place a min width value in there of half of 992, um, but that would mean there'd come a point when half of 992 is still greater than the total width of the, the browser the user's using. Um, so that's not a great approach. Uh, instead, we're going to use a conditional statement and uh, width will say uh, min width is 100%. And I can right click on there and I can go on to the other one and right click and then hopefully there we go. They pop on top of each other. Let's do a little bit of styling to make that look nicer. Um, we take our column and uh, let's get rid of that nasty background as an illustration and let's put a, a border in there and a little bit of a curve to it. Uh, that, I don't think that should be white. That needs to be a dark gray, which is really sharp. Yeah, that's better. Um, do the same here. Get that color across. I like being consistent. Um, and let's preview that. And we'll notice some things that need tidying up like a gap in between. So because I'm using a 20 pixel margin elsewhere in my app, uh, I will use a 20 pixel margin here. Um, so I'm gonna select my columns. And actually, instead of applying it as a margin or padding, I can apply it as a gap. And if I apply it as a, as a gap of 20 for the row gap and the column gap, then you'll see something rather nice happens here which is that when it goes to a full width, it also includes that gap in there. So we have now a responsive column layout, which stacks and adapts no matter how wide or how small the page is. We're making good progress on the responsive side of things. So let's work our way back up the app and uh, look at making these other, other elements responsive. Starting with our hero, um, because that would be nice and quick. So if we go and preview it, we'll see that at some point, this text becomes a little bit too large. Um, let's do something about that. So we can edit it and we can say, and the current width values down here, as well as having the shortcuts up here, um, we can say uh, when the screen width gets below, let's say 570, let's change the font size here. So width. Our width is, uh, let's go this time, equal to or less than uh, 570. Uh, font size, and let's take it down to say 36. And you'll see when it hits 570, well, technically 569, uh, it shrinks down. Okay, so there's, there's one other thing I want to show in the hero, which um, I should have come to earlier. Um, with uh, building an app for other users in particular, uh, it's worth learning a little bit of uh, UX design. That stands for user experience. And uh, if you're on any of the, uh, the massive companies, so your, your Facebooks and your YouTube, they, they will have invested heavily in UX design. And there, there'll be so much of the way that they design their site is uh, to make it uh, intuitive and common sense what items do. Uh, and one of the ways that we can do that in Bubble uh, and can feel like a little bit mature, but it's an important bit of ensuring that our users don't get frustrated with what we make is a hover effect. Um, how do we do a hover effect? Let me show you. 
So at the moment, I have this button uh, styled by a style named primary button. Um, and we have a video on our YouTube channel talking about why uh, this is something that can be overlooked, that uh, style allows you to basically build the look of an element once and then apply it to multiple elements. Um, so we could have multiple buttons. And then if I go in and edit the style, let's take the, uh, the font weight down, it applies it to every instance of the same type of element that has that style applied. Sometimes it's helpful to override that. So we'll do that by removing style. That makes this element then unique. It's not going to have an impact on other buttons. And over in, in conditional, uh, you can see it's inherited it from that style I've just removed. Uh, I have a conditional statement of this button is hovered and then the background color. And it's quite common just to go with a color that is slightly darker. And we can preview that by hitting the on. So then the UI editor behaves as if the, uh, this statement is uh, passing as true. Um, why is that relevant to responsive design? Uh, well, because when we have a user who's on a tablet or a phone, they don't have hover. So as well as bearing in mind that um, if there's an important part of our app that relies on, on this element is hovered to display key information or, or, or whatever, really, um, you can't rely on that on a device that doesn't use a mouse because there is no hover when you're scrolling on an iPhone, for example. Something else to bear in mind is when we start to get down to, say, really small screens, is uh, someone isn't pointing with a mouse pointer or even likely using a stylus, they're using a finger uh, to navigate your site. So don't create your buttons too small or too close to each other uh, where they can't clearly tap on the elements that they want to interact with. So we've made our way up our page. We have made our columns responsive and we've made our uh, header, sorry, our hero responsive. Let's have a look at making our header responsive. And this will involve uh, building in a hamburger menu. Just going to take a short drink. Why do we need a hamburger menu? Well, we need a hamburger menu or a mobile menu because when the screen gets to a certain size, we don't want our header to be filled up with just a list of pages. There are a few steps you need to make uh, to get this to work. First of all, we need all our navigation, everything that we want displayed on desktop, but we want to get rid of on mobile, we need that in a group because we're gonna apply a conditional statement. And that conditional statement will be, uh, again, page width. Uh, so this time we'll say less than 992 and element is visible and leave this unchecked because then the inverse of that happens the, the element is not visible when this condition is applied uh, we have the element uh, is visible on page load so uh, again i've seen people get a, a little bit confused over this um, you you kind of pick where you start we're starting with the mobile with sorry with the desktop menu loading in on the page and then if it if bubble the text, and this happens all very quickly, but you still have to pick a place to start. If bubble the text that this statement is true, it will make it not visible. Lastly, uh, in this section, we need to collapse when hidden. And that just means that uh, if, if an element isn't visible, then uh, it will still take up the space that it appears on the canvas of your page, unless you check um, collapse when hidden, in which case it disappears as if it was never there to begin with. And we want that, otherwise everything is still gonna bunch up. Um, let's just check, there we go. It appears and reappears. But we need something to appear in its place. And that's going to be our hamburger mobile menu. Let's take our icon and place it in here. Is it, I always forget what, Awesome. Call it. Uh, there we go. 
Oh, they call it navigation. There we go. Okay. So my inner container for my header is putting a equal amount of space in between each element. Now, um, technically, because only one of these will be visible at a time, it doesn't actually matter. But for the sake of creating a, uh, an app design, which will make sense to me in the future, um, I'm going to group these together uh, into a row and then uh, align it to the right and uh, get rid of the uh, min width there. And then just put this over to the uh, to the right. So uh, now we have the text links disappear, uh, leaving just the mobile uh, hamburger. So we need to do the opposite of what we've done with the text links. Um, and so to demonstrate that, this time I'm going to say um, that the hamburger icon doesn't load in on page load and will only appear. Um, when the page width is, and I'll just check what I've got here, equal to or greater than uh, 92, 992. Uh, have I got that the right way around? Equal to or less than, that's it, I think. Anyway, I can test it. Okay, yeah. You're seeing now the effect of we haven't checked in layout collapse when hidden because it's still taking up space. Even though this is, uh, according to our bubble app, this is a large screen desktop. We're showing the full list of our menu items. It's still taking up space. So we just tick collapse when hidden, which means that it pops into view uh, at exactly the same instance that our text reappears. And so they swap places. Um, you could approach this using workflows. You could have uh, like a workflow that says when a condition is true and then you have your page condition there. Um, but I quite like keeping the workflows to a minimum and reducing the, uh, you know, the amount of actions and, and uh, clutter that takes place there. You, um, because you could, because your workflows would be triggered like a show element or a hide element. So you'd need to have a workflow to show an element at a certain page width and then hide an element at a certain page width. So in order to get that effect, I think you'd end up with like four different workflows. Um, and we can replace that with two conditional statements. So that's why I like doing it that way. Um, now we need to think about what happens when a user clicks on our hamburger. I think we will do this as a group focus. The group focus is a type of group uh, that is, it's like a pop-up, but uh, it is anchored to an element on the page. So we can anchor it to uh, our navigation icon, uh, which interesting, that's not gonna work because our navigation icon is not visible. Uh, so instead of anchoring it to the navigation icon, uh, I'm going to anchor it to the group that the navigation icon sits in, which is uh, group I. Because group I, uh, the group that are labeled to begin with uh, as right, that disappears, uh, whereas group I shifts to whether it contains all of the, the text labels or whether it just contains the icon. Um, so Instead, we make this anchor to group I. Uh, and uh, let's just check that in the response. Yeah. So you, it anchors to the uh, left hand edge of group I. Group I is only now as big as this icon. Um, so we can create an offset here. Um, in fact, if we get some parameters in here, some widths, make it column fixed width, let's just go 100, uh, 150, we need to be able to fit a little bit of text in there. Um, and so then our offset left, if we go minus 150, it's probably going to be a little bit too much. Uh, and just by putting my cursor in there and using the arrow keys, fine tune it. 
Uh, right, we now need our text labels. And so I'm just going to copy uh, one of our navigation labels uh, and put it in the group focus. And the group focus, you know, you heard me say this already, but I like padding, particularly 20 pixel padding. Uh, and I like using the apply gap. Uh, so let's go for 15. Because of time, I won't bother updating them, but you get the idea. I can create a, a list of my navigation here. Uh, and how do we then make that appear? We need to use a workflow for that. And our workflow is triggered by clicking on the navigation icon. So when the navigation icon or the hamburger is clicked, uh, we can go into element actions and uh, you could do a show or a hide. Um, but I think in this instance, it's a bit more intuitive for your user. Remember, we're, we're trying to uh, be UX professionals here, thinking about user experience uh, to toggle it. Um, because that then means that if a user pops open the mobile menu and then wishes to close it, they might click on the, um, the icon again. In fact, we, we will add a, a little conditional statement in there. I think we've got time to do that. Uh, so this will be show uh, group focus. So now if a user was to click on the icon, it's going to show this group and this uh, will continue to uh, perform quite well. Let's add a little bit of thing there. There we go. Uh, this will continue to work uh, even if you get ridiculously small. Um, because I was talking about UX, let's just add in a really nice feature, which is when the menu is open, we don't want to show the hamburger icon anymore. We can show a X for close. So we can say when group focus is visible, uh, then uh, icon is changed to close. And so that will look like that. Let's give it a refresh. And then uh, I'm just gonna, if I inspect the element and go into, so it doesn't work, it doesn't work perfectly. I'm using the, the browser to uh, sort of trick the website into thinking that I'm on a smaller screen. Uh, and the reason it's not looking so great is because I've got debug mode, which is this bar at the bottom when you're uh, in your uh, dev or, or even you're logged in, you're in your live version if you bubble that. Um, so let's get rid of that. Right, there we go. It is now performing much better and looking like a fully responsive app. And so if I click on the button here, it toggles to an X. And then if I click on it again, oh, okay. Maybe I was a little bit too rushed there something okay something is not quite working there what have i done wrong uh toggle group focus when that it's clicked um let's bring back in the debugger uh, there you go it was going so well up until that point um it's all part of the journey of uh just trying to work out why what you built is not working so well. Um, in fact, it's not going to, the, uh, the bubble debugger is not going to work so well for me in mobile. Anyway, I think you get the picture of what is possible uh, because if a user was to click on a, a menu item, they get taken to a new page, the page effectively refreshes or at least you know, the, it reloads. Um, so uh, it would clear down anyway, uh, and the user can also just click off it or tap off it, in fact, if they're on mobile. So I think, there we go, that is quite a quick but also detailed look at the new response engine. We've built a header element, we've built a hero section, uh, which uses uh, layout light parent, and we've used rows uh, to create a column layout with fully responsive columns. Just as a reminder, for those of you who've joined us, our columns stack 
uh, based on a conditional statement uh, taking uh, place here. Uh, yeah, there we have it. Thank you so much, Matt. Um, yeah, so we have a couple of um, viewers here. Um, if you guys have any questions, do feel free to make a comment so that Matt can uh, help you to explain, uh, to answer your questions, basically. We're going to leave a few minutes uh, just for the QA session. Well, maybe you're typing in your questions or thinking about it. Just a reminder, and we'll put this out on um, on our YouTube channel and uh, on our Twitter account. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to do a rather cool thing here. There we go. There's our Twitter handle. Um, that I will basically be starting an app from scratch uh, on Monday. It will be an hour or two later than when we started this stream. Um, yeah, like I say, details, we'll, we'll, we'll put them out on um, our social media channels. Um, yeah, I'm going to be building a, uh, a small business infantry tracker app uh, for like a business that takes in a number of different materials and then compiles them together and they produce a product and they want to keep track of the materials that they've got and, uh, and you know, know when to order new ones, know how many they go through each month. Uh, I don't know how far I'll get, but my plan is to spend an hour and I'll be streaming it of building that from scratch uh, Monday to Friday next week, uh, like an hour or two later than the current time. So it looks like we don't have any questions so far. Um, that's okay. And um, yeah, so thank you everyone for joining this, the live streaming session. Um, so don't forget that we publish um, content on a daily basis. We publish videos, new videos um, on a daily basis. And um, do uh, make sure that subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as sign up as a free user. Um, sign up free on our platform, bananoco.com. And um, great, thank you very much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you soon, bye. Bye guys.